Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my YouTube channel, Life Science with KMD. Today I am going to explain about pure line theory. Pure line is the progeny of a single homologous plant of a self-pollinated species. Wilhelm Johansson, a Danish botanist, discovered pure line theory in French bean, that is in case of Phaseolus vulgaris in 1903. Now, Johansson selected different seed of variety of French bean and grow them. Selected seeds grow in individual plant progeny having different seed size. Further, Johansson grow 19 lines having different seed lots. So, he took like large seed from a large um, larger progeny and a small seed from a smaller progeny. Each and every line show a characteristic mean seed weight. Like for example, the starting line will have a 640 mg um, of the seed weight. In um, uh, seed weight, uh, seeds are grown or sown in the line 1. And um, 650 mg seed weight were grown in the uh, line number 19. So, the largest one will be grown in the line number 1 and gradually the smallest one were, were grown in the proceeding lines. And uh, the smallest weight of the seed was 350 mg and that was grown in the line number 19. The seed size which within a line showed some variation which will be smaller than the present in the original commercial seed lot. Johansson postulated that the original seed lot was the mixture of pure lines and thus each of the 19 lines represented a pure line. Variation will be non-heritable and due to environment. Johansson classified each pure line seed into 100 mg classes and grow them separately. Then from each pure line, Johansson selected the largest and the smallest seeds to raise in next generation and grow again and again till the sixth year. That means up to sixth generation and the selection for six year will be ineffective. After this experiment also, the result was ineffective. Finally, the selection within the pure line was ineffective and gave the pure line theory. Now this is the flow chart of how he did the experiment. So commercial seed lot, he took the seed lot and progeny from individual seeds were taken. So there were 19 lines. From the first line, there will be a bigger seed, I mean bigger weight seed that is about 640 mg. And the 19th line has a smallest seed weight, um, I mean smallest seed with a weight of 350. So from this uh, each line whatever seed was shown the next generation onwards the selection of the seeds will be done where it has been partitioned into largest seed and the smallest seed and uh, this type of uh, screening will be done up to sixth generation uh, and uh, whatever the final result we got like whatever the seeds we got on the sixth generation mm, the seeds will be weighed so, Johansson um, with his experiment what he concluded is that his first conclusion was that the selection for seed weight was effective. Uh, his second conclusion was that the original land race consists of um, mixture of homozygous plant uh, and uh, thus his third conclusion was that within the line phenotypic variation was environmental in nature and further selection within the pure line will not result in further genetic variation or genetic change. Johansson result clarified the difference between phenotype and genotype and gave selection a firm scientific basis. Now what are the characteristics of pure line? It is a homozygous, non-heritable variation will be seen and they are stable. Pure line selection. Pure line selection is used in self-pollinated crops and it is used to improve local variety, old pure line variety and introduce uh, 
and to introduce a new variety. Now what is the procedure for pure line selection? For that in the first year 200 to 300 plants are selected on the basis of their phenotype. Then in the second year the individual progeny uh, plant progeny are grown. Undesirable progenies are rejected. Then in the third year selected progenies are planted in a preliminary yield trial and inferior progeny are rejected. Then from fourth to sixth year replicated yield trial are conducted at several location. Inferior progenies are rejected. Disease resistance and quality tests are done. So this is the multi location tri yield trial. Then in the seventh year best progeny is released as a new variety. The seed multiplication for distribution begin. So this is the procedure for pure line selection. Now what are the uses of pure line? The superior line is used as a variety. It is used as a parent in development of new variety by hybridization. It is used for the study of mutation and other biological investi investigation. Now what are the advantages? They have a same genotype, attractive and liked by the former and consumer. Pure line are stable and long test for many years due to its extreme uniformity easily identified in seed certification process. Disadvantages. New genotype are not created by pure line selection. Improvement is limited to isolation of best genotype present in population. Selection of pure line require great skill and familiarity with the crop. It is difficult to detect small difference that exists between culture. The breeder has to give more time. Pure line have a limited adoptability. Therefore, it can be recommended for cultivation in limited area only. No more improvement is possible for isolation of the best available genotype in population. Genetic basis of pure line theory. The variation of seed size is the original commercial seed lot of beans was due to effect of heredity and um, environment. The variation within the particular pure line was due to difference in micro environment of individual plant of the line for few new I mean few generation of selfing are required to reduce homozygosity. Reduction of heterozygosity at each locus occur irrespective of the number of heterozygous loci. Percentage of, of homozygosity at the given locus is not affected by the number of gene pair. All the heterozygous loci approach homozygosity at the same rate. The proportion of the complete homozygous individual increases at slow rate as the number of gene pair increases whereas increase in the rate of homozygosity is independent of the number of genes. Percentage of homozygous and heterozygous individual after self-fertilization of an individual heterozygous at single locus. See if you take this as a generation from the first generation to the last generation like up to the experiment uh, how many years or how many years we are going to proceed that experiment to that end generation. This was represented by the end generation and uh, this is the genotype. It is like um, homozygous dominant care genotype and this is the heterozygous condition. Um, and this one is the homozygous recessive genotype and uh, the percentage of heterozygosity uh, in each uh, generation and percentage of homozygosity in each um, generation. So in the first generation, so if you take uh, at the beginning of the um, experiment, the homozygosity um, in dominant and recessive character was zero. Whereas uh, the, I mean, dominant and uh, dominant uh, um, homozygous genotype and um, recessive genotype was zero, but uh, the heterozygous condition was in this uh, condition was seen. 
so in the first at the beginning of the experiment what they have taken is that the heterozygosity was 100% whereas the homozygosity was nil because see here there is no homozygous condition whereas in the first generation there was like 50% of heterozygosity and 50% of homozygous condition see here you can see here the genotype where you can have a 50% like uh, this is um, 25% and this is for 25% of homozygous uh, dominant and a homozygous recessive condition so uh, and this one is the heterozygous condition which was 50% so if you add these two 25 plus 25 so 50% of homozygous condition and 50% of heterozygous condition whereas in case of uh, second generation what happens is that heterozygous condition was only 25% but the homozygous condition was 75% as the generation increases homozygosity reaches the 99% 99.9% of homozygous condition at um, 10th generation so and heterozygosity reduced to 0.098% and this was represented by 1 by 2 to the power of m into 100 whereas in case of heterozygosity the percentage was represented by 1 minus 1 by 2 to the power of m into 100 sources of genetic variation in pure line it could be gene mutation creates variability in pure line and the rate of mutation is different for different loci. Allele of same locus mutate at variable rate. Natural crossing and recombination. New gene combination. So these are the sources of genetic variation in pure line. Application of pure line breeding. Pure line cultivar promote a mechanical form operation. Cultivar developed for discriminating market that put a premium on eye appeal example uniform shape and size improving uh, newly domesticated crop that have some variability integral part of other breeding methods genetic issue pure line breeding produce cultivar with a narrow genetic basis depend prime uh, primarily on production response and stability across environment pure line selection pure line consists of progeny descended solely by self-pollinated form um, self-pollinated from a single homozygous plant pure line selection is therefore a procedure for isolating pure line from a mixtured or um, from a mixed population thanks for watching my video please subscribe to my channel by clicking on subscription button subscription doesn't cost you any money to get a notification click on a bell icon do like and share this video with friends and family if you have any kind of feedback do share it on a comment box thank you